Hi everybody, it's Mrs. Williams, and today we're gonna to talk about how to code your joystick so you can test your chassis or any other motors you have on your robot. So first of all, we're gonna be using what's called the VEX Code IQ application. This is found on your laptop, and if it needs to be updated, or if, they're, if you don't see it on your laptop, your teacher is gonna to need to load it on there with their account before you can use it. So once they've done this and you're able to open up your VexCode IQ project, it's gonna look like this. Now, there are some tutorials you can find right here talking about how to set up a drivetrain and motors, but I'm gonna walk you through that right now. There's also uh, example projects. So you can open up some example projects to see how others would have coded different robots. But some of them are a little more complicated than you need. So let's go ahead and just go through how to configure a joystick. So first of all, you will see that there is a device setup icon right here, which is a motor. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Now we are actually using the first generation brains. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. If you got a new brain, you'd change it, but we are first generation. We are the original VexIQ brains. Now we're gonna add some devices. The first device I want you to add by clicking on the plus sign is your drivetrain. If you have a two motor drivetrain, you're gonna click on this one. And if you have a four motor drivetrain, that means four motors controlling your chassis, you'll click on this one. I'm gonna go ahead and click the two motor drivetrain. Now it's going to prompt you to choose your left motors and select the port. So whichever port my left motor is plugged into, I'm gonna select that port. My left motor is plugged into port one. My right motor is plugged into port six. All right, I actually do not have a gyro sensor, so I'm going to uncheck that gyro sensor. Now you will see that there are some measurements you need to make so that your drivetrain runs properly. The first one is the wheel size. So you will measure your wheel size, and then it looks like we've got to measure in millimeters. So these are your options of the different wheel sizes. I'm gonna go ahead and stay with my 200 millimeter size. Now I can change these to inches if you're more comfortable in measuring in inches. I'm gonna now measure the track width. The track width, if you're not sure what that is, I click this little question mark, you will see it's middle of wheel to middle of wheel. So mine is actually a little bit bigger than 6.81, it's 7.5. Okay, my next one, my wheelbase, I'm gonna change this to inches. And you'll see the wheelbase is actually axle to axle, so the midpoint of the wheels along the sides. Mine is bigger than 2.99 inches, I'm gonna change it, mine is four. Now I do not have a gear ratio on my wheels, so I'm gonna keep it as a one to one gear ratio. If you have a gear ratio of torque or speed, you're gonna change this accordingly. Okay, it looks good, I'm gonna click done, and my drivetrain is now configured. You will see that a few new pieces of code come up in our menu related to the drivetrain because when we do autonomous coding, you can drive forward, you can turn right, but we'll talk about that in the next video. I'm gonna add another device because I have already added a couple more motors to my robot. So I'm gonna click add device and I actually have two motors that are going to run my lift. And so I'm going to use a motor group. I'm gonna click on that and I have ports two and five, and this is going to be my lift motors. Now I can reverse the um, direction um, right here by toggling this. If I want the one to go one way and one to go the other, usually if you have them on opposite sides or back to back, these one, one will have to be reversed and the other one's normal. When you test, you're gonna find out. So if you get it wrong, you just have to toggle the switch. Now I can, because this is a lift, I'm gonna change this to being up and this one to being down. And then I'm gonna click done. So my lift motors, I have two on my lift, are now programmed in ports two and five. I have one more motor, it's for my intake roller or my claw, whatever you have on yours. I'm going to add a device. This time it's a single motor. So I'm just gonna add a single motor, which is right here. And this one's in port nine. And this one is actually my claw. And instead of being forward and reverse, it's gonna be open and close. 
Okay, I'm gonna keep it this way of normal direction, but if I find it's going the wrong way, I simply can reverse the motor. I'm gonna click done. Okay, we have all our motors programmed in a drivetrain, our lift, and our claw. So now I need to configure the joystick. I'm gonna click on add device, and I'm gonna add a controller. So now you see this looks like your controller. You've got buttons on the front of your controller, your joystick. I've got my joystick handles right here, and I've got a few more buttons. Now all you need to do is click on the button and it will tell you that this is an arcade control left side joystick. This is what gamers like to use. It's a single control joystick. On the right side, if you prefer using your right hand, you can change it to a right side arcade control. Now I prefer, and I'm going to click on it one more time, I prefer using a dual joystick because it actually gives you more control once you learn how to use it. That means your left joystick is going forward and back and your right joystick is going right to left. All right, I'm going to now use my buttons in the front of the joystick. I'm gonna click on them and this is going to be for my lift. If I wanna change it to my claw, I simply just click on it again. But I'm gonna keep this one by clicking it. I'm gonna click this one to be lift. I'm gonna open and close my claw with this R button on the right. Okay, those are all my motors now configured to my joystick and I'm gonna click done. So this is all we need to do to configure our joystick. I'm gonna go ahead and close this window with this arrow and you will see up here at the top, when you plug in your brain, this will turn green. Right now, I do not have a brain connected, but once it's plugged in, it will turn green and it will say the name of your brain. Once your brain is plugged in, it'll give you the option to download. You simply download to your brain and you can run it and your joystick should work and you can test your chassis. Now, a couple things you need to do before you download, you need to save your project. Now, I like to save this project with the, a name that can help me remember what it is. So this one is my joystick drive program. So when I'm driving in a match, I'm gonna use my joystick drive and I'm gonna click save. Now over here you can see you can choose the slot that it's in. You have four slots to choose from, which, mean you, which means you can save up to four programs on your brain. And at a competition, you don't have to keep downloading new programs. You already have four programs downloaded. I'm gonna choose slot one for my joystick drive, but I might choose slot two for an autonomous program and slot three for another autonomous program. So make sure you don't click one all the time because you'll write over your joystick drive. So I'm gonna keep my program or my slot one for my joystick driving program. And that's all we're gonna do there. And it is now time to download to our brain. Okay, that's it, good luck. I hope your chassis work the way you want, but don't get frustrated. They generally don't on your first try and you just need to fix them and they will work soon enough. All right, good luck everyone.